right, so good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants, the digital education partner of your Toronto Zoo. And today is such an exciting celebration. Welcome in to all of you joining from around the world and a huge number of you across Ontario. I think through our platform alone, we had, I think, half the schools in Ontario register for this program, so well over 10,000 people expected to join in a really special celebration today. The last time we joined with the Toronto Zoo, it was for Mother's Day, and we got a chance to hang out with some giraffes and some wallabies. It was a great time. It's on all our YouTube channels if you guys want to check it out. But today we're diving in on a number of really exciting things. For starters, before we dive in with today's celebratory theme, I want to say that the Toronto Zoo is now open again. It's the first time that's been the case in a very, very long time. If you haven't checked out their website, torontozoo.com, and how you can go and enjoy a great time with your family, I really encourage you to do so. It had a huge influence in my life, uh, getting me into this career of sharing science and nature with the public, and I'm sure it will inspire you and your kids as well. If you're not in the general Toronto area, check out zoo to you on the Toronto Zoo website to see all their virtual programs they've been running all year long and will continue doing after they are open as well. It's a really fantastic place. I hope we all get the chance to visit. Now today we are diving in with World Giraffe Day. What an exciting celebration and we are going to get to hang out with some special guests. We're going to get to hang out with our giraffes, members of the zoo care team. Uh, you know, it may have been closed all this time, but the zoo has been caring for all these animals in a really special way. And we're going to hear a lot of great stories about that uh, throughout the rest of the broadcast. So buckle up, join me in being super excited about giraffes. And I'm going to turn it over to Jason and some giraffes right with them on camera to kick off today's celebration. Jason, welcome in and take us away. Hey. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. And welcome to your Toronto Zoo and welcome to World Giraffe Day. So. It is officially World Giraffe Day. The long wait is over. It's finally here. And the Toronto Zoo, as mentioned, is back open. So we have some awesome people visiting the giraffes today on this special day. <laughs> and of course, we have the stars of the show themselves, the giraffes. So World Giraffe Day, what is it? Well, it is a day that is set aside to celebrate giraffes, to uh, raise awareness for their conservation, and just for the giraffe community at large to kind of celebrate uh, what is uh, most people's favorite animal. So it's on June 21st because that is the longest day of the year. So it's the longest day of the year for the tallest animal in the world. Seems very, very fitting. And you know, June's usually a beautiful sunny day, never a rainstorm on uh, World Draft Day. So <laughs> we're uh, obviously have awesome weather here today. So welcome everyone from the giraffe community of Toronto Zoo. And if you're new, well, you're part of the draft community here now. So World Giraffe Day, as I mentioned, is to um, raise awareness for the giraffe. The giraffe, these are Maasai giraffe. Uh, there's many different types of giraffe and they are an endangered species. And this is a, a type of giraffe whose numbers continue to decline. So despite the fact that there's lots of conservation, there's lots of people who love giraffes, these animals still are in trouble to this day. And so we, we have to raise awareness for them. So uh, one thing that you guys can do is, uh, you know, spread the word about the silent extinction of giraffes. If you're a giraffe fan or you know somebody who likes giraffes, just let them know that uh, giraffes need our help. So that's one thing that we do on World Giraffe Day. And of course, just enjoy some giraffe good times is always, uh, is always on, the, on the agenda as well. So here at the Toronto Zoo, we have three giraffes. We have Big Kiko who's in the back there. He is the tallest of the three. He's our male giraffe. And he is quite possibly the tallest living mammal in all of Canada. There's no, uh, no Canadian animals that are bigger than a giraffe. A Maasai giraffe is the biggest of all the types of giraffes. So Kiko, uh, he is in the prime of his life. He is, uh, he is absolutely massive. He's over 16 feet and he's over 2,100 pounds. He is a very, very, very large uh, animal uh, just in general. But definitely here at the zoo, he's one of the biggest animals we have. Uh, Kiko's uh, a pretty chill guy, but as a bull gets older, they get some bullish uh, traits. And one of them is that they need to be dominant. So Kiko loves to know that he is the dominant animal of his area. So you can see right now he's kind of in front of a barrel that we used to put uh, food in for them. But uh, beside them on the other umbrella, there's uh, some fire hose on a hanger. That's something that Kiko likes to knock around with his head. It gives him the sensation of using those ossicones or skin covered horns on his head for uh, establishing his dominance of this territory and also of the other drafts that live here with him, which comprises of also Mistari, who's coming over to join us right now. Mistari is our female giraffe. She is also fully grown. So 
she's she's uh by no means small herself but she is uh small compared to kiko now female giraffe they also have those ossicones but uh kiko's are are devoid of hair because he uses them to combat uh you know toys in his area to establish his dominance whereas the female giraffes they do not use their horns in that way so that's why they always look a lot uh more covered in hair they're they're generally a more pretty appearance than the male who uh has a more uh, knobby and bony appearance. Let's see if she wants a pellet. There we go, good girl. So Mastari is an adult female giraffe and she's of course the mother of our baby giraffe. And uh, I, I'm going a bit out of order, but we also have another giraffe in our herd and it's uh, that Mastari is currently pregnant. So uh, Amani soon will have a little uh, sibling joining her on the giraffe exhibit. So Mastari, um, Kiko and Mastari of course are very, very, important genetic match. Mastari is the number one most genetically uh, important female giraffe in the North American population. So it's very, very important to conserve and promote her genetics. And I mean, if you just look at them, they look like beautiful, healthy animals. So who, who wouldn't want more uh, little giraffes that look like this? And of course, uh, a nice robust herd is uh, also good for the giraffes' uh, social interactions. Giraffes are a very social animal, so the more the merrier. So uh, she is pregnant and she will be due in February. So she's, she's uh, still just humming along. Uh, her, and that brings us to the third of the giraffe herd, little Amani Innes Dag. So Amani is just over a year old. And uh, what a giraffe over a year old looks like is just over 10 feet tall. She's, I think, 315 centimeters. And she's around 800 pounds. So that is a lot of growth in just one year of life. They grow very, very fast. Uh, at one year old, she is kind of finally being weaned off her mother. So um, uh, that means that she has to do all the more eating herself to maintain this uh, growth curve. And with no longer nursing off her mom, it means that she, uh, Mastari, can dedicate her resources to making yet another baby. So I think we're going to have a video of Amani. Oh, it's already playing. Of Amani growing up. So we're going to enjoy that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the first year of Amani's life, uh, and it was uh, quite an exciting year for us. And uh, most of it, unfortunately, it was a giraffe keepers here time with her. But now we're just able to share uh, Amani with you guys again. And yeah, so the giraffe, uh, our giraffe year here, we kind of like to pick a theme every year for uh, how we're going to celebrate giraffe. And this year, our uh, kind of idea was the idea of community. Like, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes a whole community to save giraffes. So just by tuning into this broadcast today, you're doing, you're doing something important. You're learning about giraffes, their conservation efforts, and you're able to now be an agent of change and spread that information to people in your life and help us out. But there's other ways that you can be a seed for change for these giraffes. And a lot of them are just uh, straightforward things that, that we should be doing anyways to be a respectful uh, citizen of the earth. So things you can do is plant a tree, plant a wildflower garden, do things that help protect nature in your community. And just by making earth a more habitable and happy place, it's good for all species. Something else you can do, the, the number one thing I always like to recommend doing is just coming to visit us at the Toronto Zoo. So we use the resources that we get from you guys coming here to help conserve giraffes in the wild. So if you want to have a great time and experience giraffes, you can come have a, a fun day with your friends and family here at the zoo. And you can feel good at the end of the day knowing that you helped save giraffes just by coming here and having a good time. So that's probably the most fun way you can save giraffes. And other than that, I'm, I'm just all the things that we've been doing. You know, in our lockdown, you got to make one trip and go to all the stores at once. You're conserving gas, you're conserving trips, you're helping save the planet. So I think over the last year, we've noticed wildlife has been coming closer to the city. Things just seem like a lot better because of things that we've been kind of forced to do. But a lot of them are things that we should be doing. We should be, we should be very respectful of the earth and being good stewards for it. So about a month ago, we asked everybody in our giraffe community, to share us uh, their videos of why they love giraffes. So little Amani Innistag is of course named after Anne Innistag, who is the original woman who loves giraffes. So we wanted to know why you guys love giraffes. So I think we're gonna roll to an awesome video of you guys telling us why. 
Hi there, I'm Delphi Young, CEO of Your Toronto Zoo. And what I love about giraffes <laughs> is how they demonstrate how nature can evolve to fit every niche. I love giraffes because what's not to love? Do you love giraffes? Yes. Well, why do you love giraffes? Because they're my favorite. I love giraffes because they are simultaneously the derpiest and the most majestic animal. We really like giraffes. Um, what we most like about giraffes is their patterned body or patterned coat, as well as these little horns that they have. They're hairy horns. You like them, don't you? <laughs> I love giraffes. Why do you love giraffes? I'm my favorite. and I'm I'm I wanted to tell you how many things I love about the giraffe. Would you like to know? Yeah. <laughs> well, look at the long neck. I think it's just a, a, no one has a long neck like him. And then the beautiful nose and the long legs and the fur on the back where it just looks just like a nail. I love giraffes because but when they drink hot chocolate, by the time they get to the stomach, it's cold. I love giraffes mm -hmm. because they have long necks, necks and there's, they have spots. I love giraffes because mommy was with giraffes. I love giraffes because they're really challenging to win over. But once you do, the relationship is amazing and it's so rewarding. Hi, my name is Carly. And um, why I like giraffes is because they're so cute, especially when they're babies. Look, I got this giraffe bottle from Toronto Zoo. They're so cute. I wish I had a baby giraffe in my backyard so I can play with it all day. Thank you so much and happy giraffe day. Bye! You like them best. I like these animals. Oh, yeah, so do I. And they're all different. Yeah. Each animal is different than another. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Happy World Giraffe Day. Happy World Giraffe Day. And long live the giraffe. I love giraffes because everything about them is amazing. They're so cute. 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 They're so Neck and long tongue and spot because they have like the giraffes because they um they're tall and they have spots. Happy International Giraffe Day from the Toronto Zoo. My favorite fact is that giraffes have to bend to drink water. Miranda and I love giraffes because of their long purple tongues and I love the babies because they walk around all awkward and stumbly and I can relate. Okay. Good. All right. Well, we're back. That video was awesome. Thank you everybody for sending in your videos. And you know what? If you didn't send in a video, that's all good. What I recommend you do is share this on your social media platforms or any sort of information, photos about giraffes. Just raise awareness however you can and let everybody know that this is the day for giraffes. Well, I am joined by a very special guest. Uh, I think anyone who's part of our giraffe community already knows who it is. It is the queen of giraffes, the woman who loves giraffes herself. And Dag is with us. And she is also the namesake for little Amani Innes Dag. So, Anne, welcome back to the Toronto <laughs> Zoo. It's so great to have you here. As always, you're uh, next to the drafts. You're our favorite. So <laughs> it's always great when you come join us. So, Anne, I just want to ask you a couple quick questions about giraffes on World Giraffe Day. And I think I'm going to keep it real easy. Why do you love giraffes? What is it about giraffes that you love giraffes so much? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's so hard, isn't it? Because you just love them. When you have children, you love them too. But Somehow they seem even better than children. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mary, don't listen. <laughs> Anne's kids are here. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I kind of agree with you, Anne, that giraffes, it's like an 
unexplainable attraction that you have to them. There's so many unique features about a giraffe. It's just so hard to narrow it down to one thing. I think it's like kind of uh, in that video, Brent said, it's just like the wow of the giraffe is just overwhelming. So can you uh, maybe uh, let us know like what fostered this love of giraffes that you have? Like, was this since you were little or? Yeah, I saw one when I was in the, in the zoo in Chicago when I was four years old. Amazing. And I asked my mother if I could see some in Canada. And she said, well, no, there's none in Canada. So yeah, that was my, <laughs> that was my first draft and, a, and my love of my life until I saw some more. So yeah. that's amazing. And you know what? I think that really highlights on one of the uh, reasons why of, of change that I uh, brought up where just coming to the zoo is such an amazing event. Like it allows us to do the conservation work that we love to do. That's our purpose. Uh, but it also inspires the next generation. Without that trip uh, to see that giraffe, who, right. who knows uh, if we would have had uh, all the awesomeness that Anne has provided with us with over the years. <laughs> so uh, in your, uh, I'm not going to say long, in your very short uh, time working with, <laughs> I don't want to age you, but uh, <laughs> like, how have you seen giraffe conservation change? Like, Were giraffes endangered when you first started working with them in no, Africa? I, no one even knew what the word meant. Because um, they weren't allowed, the, the people that lived there weren't allowed to kill them. And so, really, people just let them wander around and, and um, see uh, what they want. So, it was more an attitude of coexisting with the natural environment yeah, rather yeah. than exploiting the natural yeah. <laughs> which is always, a, <laughs> always okay. a, the respectful way to go. <laughs> so, it does it like, it must be um, upsetting to see the, the fact that uh, humans haven't heated. Uh, you know oh yeah the, oh yeah you're all yeah it, it, it is terrible when you see people just yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's uh definitely one of the main reasons for world giraffe day is to raise awareness that you know you may not there's traditional animals you think of when you think of endangered species and i'm not really sure giraffe is one of the ones that people think of but these giraffes are in desperate need of help there are some subspecies of giraffes that are in very, very low numbers. And like I said, Maasai giraffe, this is one of the types of giraffes in a very pop populous part of the world. Everybody knows it, and yet the numbers still continue to decline. Yeah. So obviously we haven't learned the lesson. So when you went to Africa, though, was this something common that, like, you know, young women went to Africa and studied <laughs> wild animals in the wild? Or no, was no. that easy for you? I imagine and, very easy, right? Well, no, men didn't do it either. <laughs> Nobody did it because they, no one thought that was important. So that's awesome. So I just want everyone to pick up on that, that <laughs> Anne uh, Dag, our Canadian hero, went to Africa as a young woman before anyone was studying wild animal behavior in the wild, before any animal. You are the, the pioneer and the original, and you chose the best animal, so you've got to be about the cleverest. So uh, we definitely love, uh, love everything that you've done. And uh, as I understand, you've also started an organization to help save the giraffes. Yeah, and we're... And we're um having a lot of things sent people are buying them we can send the money over we already have a woman with a phd going to every school and talking to the children amazing amazing yeah. so it, that's it, the ann innistag foundation right yeah so a big plug ann innistag foundation that's andag's foundation and uh you know you can be assured that what you donate goes directly to conservation of giraffes uh in africa um for sure so that's awesome and also you're doing your part uh, to inspire the next generation as well oh, with I hope so. the Junior Giraffe Club. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's my daughter. She did yeah. a wonderful job. So <laughs> so the next generation has taken the mantle and Mary Dag has started the Junior Giraffe Club. So if any of you uh, want to uh, be more involved in giraffe conservation, learning about giraffes and just, you know, all things giraffe, really, that is something that you can certainly look into joining the Junior Giraffe Club. I highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, it's just another awesome way to help save giraffes. So I think we have a video even from the Junior Giraffe Club. So why don't we throw to that right now?
name's Alan. I'm from Toronto, and I like giraffes because they have long necks. Hi, my name is Aglaia, and I am from New York City. I like giraffes because of their long necks and their purple tongue. My name is Shira, and I'm from Toronto, and I like giraffes because they have cool purple tongues. I'm Emerson, and I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and I'm 12 years old. And I love ant giraffes because they are unique and special animals. They're the largest ruminants on Earth and the largest land animal. My name is Lorelai, and I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I love giraffes because they're beautiful color, and they're long necks, and they're very tall. Hello, my name is Samia. I'm seven years old. I live in Kitchener, Ontario. I really like the giraffes because they are really graceful, they are tall, and they are vegetarian like me. My name is Cinderella, and I live in Toronto, and this is why I love giraffes because they're spots and they're so beautiful and they're Aussicons. Hi, my name is Delaney. I'm from Canada, Ontario, and why I like giraffes is is because of their color, their habitat, and where they live. Hi, my name is Callie. I'm 10 years old, and I live in Washington, D.C., and why I really love giraffes is because they're really unique animals, really interesting to learn about. Hello, my name is Rebecca, and I am from Ontario, Canada. And I love giraffes because they're unlike any other animal I've seen before. I think they're very unique, and this makes them interesting to learn about, like um, their biology and history and their role in ecosystems. My name is Naomi, and I have Toronto, and I live in Toronto, um, and I am eight, and um, I love giraffes because they move gracefully like a ballerina. Hi, my name is Tala. I'm eight years old. I live in Edmonton, Canada, and I love giraffes because they're beautiful. My name is James. I'm in standard six. I'm in Sasa school. I'm a Tanzania boy. I love giraffes because they are beautiful and innocent and they have different spots. My name is Colin Leonard. I'm from Tanzania. I love so much giraffe because it's the longest animal in, in the world. Giraffe comes 3.5 meters. My name is Sharon. I'm, I'm 10 years old. I'm studying in Sasa Primary School. I love giraffes because they are the beautiful animals, they, they are representative of our country. Awesome. So that was amazing. It's awesome to see that the next generation is already starting at a better place than my generation was for sure to help these animals. I didn't even know half of these animals were endangered when I was growing up. So it's just awesome to see that although I've been telling you that these guys are in danger, the numbers are going down and that is true. It's amazing to see that the next generation has taken this challenge seriously and they're going to do their part to help correct uh, what we have done. So that is certainly amazing and very very inspiring at the toronto zoo our mission is to connect people animals and conservation science to fight extinction and they have taken that mission uh to a whole new level and that's just so so awesome <laughs> so yeah that's very very good so i want to reiterate that here at the toronto zoo our mission is conservation these drafts do need our help and so we're doing everything that we can to help save the maasai giraffe in their natural range one thing that we actually do is little Amani here 
is doing her part to help save her wild counterparts. She's involved in the draft height survey. So Amani is weighed and measured all the time. And that data is sent right back to Africa so researchers can use it to uh, corroborate what different heights versus different ages looks like. So when they're in the wild doing wild ecological studies, they'll know exactly what they're looking at. And in return, they're providing us with valuable information of what giraffes do in the wild, what they eat in the wild, what they look like, how they behave, their uh, physiology. And that helps us do better by our giraffes here in Toronto. So you see, it is a worldwide community working together to save the giraffes. And we need all people and all uh, pieces of the puzzle to help save these giraffes. So it's very, very uh, inspiring to see so many people come together from all over the world to help save such a majestic and, uh, and uh, awe-inspiring animal as the giraffe. So thank you very much, guys, for, for tuning in. And we're here now to answer all your questions. Uh, we do have one last clip, though, and that is directly from our partners in, out in Africa, the Wild Nature Institute, who do amazing work that we support. Uh, and so we're going to roll to their video now. Hello. My name Good is save. Monica Bond, and I'm a wildlife biologist. I have the wonderful job of learning about giraffes. Giraffes are the tallest animal in the world, and I think they're also the most beautiful. I work with the Wild Nature Institute, and we're partners with the Toronto Zoo, working to better understand and save giraffes from extinction. Did you know that giraffes are an endangered species? This means there are a lot fewer of them now than in the recent past, and they are, they are in danger of disappearing forever. I work in Africa, in the country of Tanzania, where giraffes live in the wild. We study the giraffe in Tanzania by driving around the countryside and taking pictures of giraffes. Every giraffe has a unique spot pattern that's like our thumbprint and identifies them throughout their entire lives. We monitor more than 3,000 giraffes throughout the year by this non-invasive method, so the giraffes go on living their lives completely undisturbed by our research. Using our photographic monitoring, we're learning about the giraffe's survival, reproduction, movements, and behavior, so we can know where giraffes are doing well, where they're not, and why. Then we can work to protect and connect areas that are most important to giraffes. Because giraffes are the world's tallest animal, we want to learn more about how they get so tall. It's hard to measure a giraffe in the wild, so we asked Toronto Zoo to regularly measure Amani the giraffe calf as she grows. The data from Amani's height measurements will go together with similar data from 24 other zoos and will tell us about how fast giraffes grow and how tall they get. We also measure our wild giraffes using our photographs, but by combining our data with the zoo giraffe height data, we get a better understanding of giraffe growth. How fast or slow an animal grows is very important for us to know. It tells us whether the food the mother and the calf are eating is giving everything the calf needs to grow to its full potential. Also, we can learn about how different places help giraffes grow fast, be healthy, and escape predators. Just like with people, childhood nutrition can be important to the lifelong health of giraffes. So our work, with the help of Amani and Toronto Zoo and our other partners, will ensure a future where giraffes thrive. Good. Nope. All right, we're back. Awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in. And guys, I want to give a shout out to our little draft community here at the Toronto Zoo. Uh, although I did the hosting, I did very little of the work for this. In fact, none at all. Uh, it was all done by Elise, who is off right now with her. She has a very important mission of her own. So that's why she couldn't be here today. And Brent, who is our lead mammal keeper. He's the king of all mammals here at the zoo. And he and Elise put together this amazing program for you guys. I'd like to thank Team Dag for coming and uh, joining us as they have the last couple of years, which is awesome. And so it really does take a community, guys, even here at the Toronto Zoo. And so thank you very much for tuning in. That's awesome. We've got two of our Junior Giraffe Club members here. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves quick? Hello, my name is Rebecca. I'm Michaela. I'm one of the facilitators. 
Awesome. So we are officially open for questions. Any questions you have about giraffes, about the Ann Innes Stag Foundation, or about the Junior Draft Club, or really anything you want, fire away. Now's your time. Fantastic. Well, Jason, you're such a fantastic host. What an amazing, energetic presentation. It's so fun to be able to see teachers live in the background. Their smiles the entire time. We've got thousands across North America and beyond. So what a special presentation today. Um, we've got our three live groups. I'm going to dive in with them in just a minute. For everyone on Facebook, thank you guys for your relentless questions. We've had so many, which is awesome. And I just want to bring up some quick notes for everybody. You brought up juniorgiraffeclub.org. I'll highlight this at the end as well. But if you want to join this, it's an amazing program. We got to meet two members today just a second ago, which is great. And of course, Ann Dag is joining us today. What a special opportunity to learn about her incredible work to understand the type of giraffes. So check out anninnisdagfoundation.org at the bottom of the screen. And again, I'll bring that up at the end. We're going to start off with one of our live groups for questions. So Ms. Enns' class, they're joining us in Orangeville, Ontario. If you want to unmute your mic, Ms. Enns, I know you put it in the chat, but more fun to say it in person. So come on in and uh, share away. I love your question. Hey, Ms. Enns. Okay, thank you for letting me share. This is uh, actually from Ms. Penfold's class. And... Um, so the question is, we heard you say that the giraffe at the zoo, the bull, he likes to be dominant. And we're wondering in the wild, in the giraffe community, is there one giraffe who likes to be like in charge, like kind of like the king? Uh, okay, that is an amazing question. So uh, for our, we have zebras that also live here at the Toronto Zoo and they definitely, they have one male that protects his group of females and he stays with them all the time. Well, giraffes are a very chill animal, and so the bulls are kind of no exception. So they live this semi-nomadic lifestyle. So if Kiko was the dominant bull of this area, he would come and he would spend some time with this herd of giraffes, you know, uh, maybe a few weeks. If there was a, a female in season, he would breed to make more giraffes. And other than that, then he would be on his way and he would roam until he found another herd of giraffes. He may never visit this group of giraffes again or he may visit them frequently throughout his lifestyle. So they live a semi-nomadic lifestyle. Now, before you become that big dominant bull giraffe, you live in what is referred to as a bachelor herd. So once the little uh, boy giraffe has grown up to a point where his testosterone has proven to be too troublesome for the herd of giraffes he's living with, off he goes with another gang of male giraffes and they practice fighting and they feed together. And uh, once they, they feel like they've uh, become the top male giraffe of that bachelor herd they'll go off and live a solitary existence looking for female giraffes to intermingle with and uh yeah live that sort of lifestyle so although kiko lives with these uh two female giraffes all the time he would be just as happy as if he was out here alone or if he was out here with a whole different group of giraffes so they don't forge the same sort of long-lasting bonds that female giraffes do female giraffes they tend to associate uh together for longer periods of time so you'll see mothers and daughters, sisters and such, uh, living together in a herd for more longer periods of time. Thanks for the very detailed answer. It's amazing how many of the programs at the zoo end up with a bunch of male animals having too much testosterone that they know what to do with it. So thank you for that. Um, let's head to Miss Little's class. They're joining us in Dutton, Ontario. Come on in guys and uh, share away. Hi there, thanks for having us. Elizabeth in my class would like to know, how do you know when giraffes are happy or sad or angry? Okay, that is an amazing question. So giraffes are very famous for one thing, well, not for one thing, but there is one thing that giraffes are very famous for, and that's being silent. They, uh, they don't produce too many audible noises, so it makes it very, uh, uh, a very uh, hard, uh, a tricky way to keep giraffes is you need to learn their language. So they're not going to do the same sort of communication that we are familiar with. So to find out if they're happy or angry or frustrated, they have certain ways of uh, expressing that to each other. And you kind of have to learn to be an interpreter for the giraffes if you're going to work with them. So one thing that they do if they're uh, displeased or they're frustrated is they swish their tail. So sometimes you see a giraffe swish his tail because there's flies and it's used as a fly swatter. But they also use that as a way to communicate, saying like, hey, I'm coming over for these leaves, so you move away. Or, you know, if we're training with them, I don't quite understand what you want me to do to get my reward. So I'm getting a little frustrated. You need to make that clear to me. So that's a way that they can tell you if they're a little upset or frustrated. When a giraffe is kind of uh, relaxed and happy, one of, the way, one of the things they do is they ruminate. So they feel very uh, calm and relaxed. They ruminate. 
So when they chew their cud, you'll see a big bolus come up their neck, their cheeks puff out, and they chew their cud, as we say. So that's something that they do when they're uh, feeling kind of relaxed. And uh, one thing that giraffes do when they're feeling very content, very safe, very happy in their surroundings is they sit down or lay down. So when you see these giraffes and they're laying down sternly on the ground, that means the giraffe is feeling very, very happy and comfortable because it takes so long for a giraffe to get down. It takes so long for a giraffe to get back up that they only do it when they're feeling very content and safe because it makes them very vulnerable to predators. So when you see giraffes that are laying down, you can uh, you can assume that they're very confident and uh, pleased with their surroundings. So that's uh, another thing they do. Great question, Mr. Little. Thank you for that. All I, right, I can give you about 100, but I'll, I'll stop at one of each. <laughs> that's a good answer. Um, Ms. Wallace, if you want to come on in to Deserondo Public School, I know your tech's a little iffy, but we'll try and get a question. Okay, sounds great. It's great to be with you. My class was so excited to be um, a part of this today. So a question they had was, um, we heard that Miss Siri is pregnant. Is there a chance that she could have multiple All right, that's an amazing question. So generally, megafauna or super, super large animals, usually they only have one baby at a time because that baby is so big. So when Mastari was born, she was about the same height and weight that I am. So it's not probably too fun to be pregnant with two of them at the same time. Now, having said that, there is uh, giraffes have had twins. It has been recorded in the both in the wild and in zoos. So it is possible, but it is it is a very big burden for a giraffe to produce two baby giraffes. And so in the wild, usually only one of them will survive. Of course, uh, when they're somewhere like the Toronto Zoo where they have the best nutrition and vet department that you can get, certainly you can make up for those facts that nature uh, wouldn't be able to, but it is very, very rare, and it's because it is uh, not uh, the best for the mother giraffe. Fantastic, guys. All right, we're going to head to Facebook. There's so many of you sharing questions. I just want to stress, I didn't get a chance to say this at the end, that of all the kids' answers, I love the idea that the hot chocolate gets cold by the time it gets to their stomach. That was truly amazing, so thank you to that family for, for sharing that. Miss um, Tobin's class has been asking a whole bunch of questions on Facebook, so welcome to you guys. And Nusheen in that class wants to know if they're taking on other animals like horses. So who are giraffes related to, Jason? Okay, so sorry, that was, what animals are giraffes related to? Okay, yeah. awesome. So the giraffes, there are four species of giraffes. There's many types of giraffes within that group. So there are many different types of giraffes that look different. These are Maasai giraffes. So there are many different types of giraffes. I know a lot of people just think it's giraffes. Well, it's not just giraffes, same as zebra, many types of zebra. But there are some other animals that they're kind of closely related to. One is called the okapi. And uh, when this is over, I highly recommend Googling a picture of uh, the okapi. If you don't know what they look like, they are about next to the giraffe, probably the most beautiful animal in the world. They're so amazing. They uh, they live in the, in the forests of Africa. And so they don't have this super long neck. They have a totally different ecology. So there is another uh, animal within the giraffidae uh, family. Uh, and then there's also another animal that's the next closest related to giraffes. And it has a Canadian connection. It is the pronghorn. So the pronghorn, which lives in North America, is also a very distant relative to the group of animals that gave rise to the giraffe. So there's also a definitely more than just Anne here. There's also another Canadian connection to giraffes, which is why I always say giraffes are an honorary Canadian animal because there's so many ties between giraffes and Canada that make uh, both giraffes and Canada awesome. So there are there's a couple uh, of of giraffes relatives for you guys. Very, very cool. I shared Okapi as a name in the, the bottom on a banner, so if people want to check that out. We've actually done several programs on Okapi at Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. If you want to see them, they truly are a really special creature as well. I'm going to go to one more question on Facebook in a minute, but the most popular question we've been getting, you mentioned this, this long tongue that's blue or purple or, or black. People want to know why the color? Why? What's with the tongue? <laughs> okay, so... This is awesome. Maybe Amy can help us out. Amy, if you can get Mastari to stretch out her tongue as far as it'll go. Can you see right where it, oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Mastari, my, my dear. If you can see where it leaves the mouth there, it's actually pink. What, what gives? Everybody told me their tongue is purple or blue. So they have a pink tongue, but you see the end that is exposed to Earth's mighty sun 
is what is uh, colored that dark color. And of course, the theory for that is if your tongue is out in the sun all day, it will get sunburn, which cannot feel good. So because they use their tongue to strip the leaves from branches, it needs a bit of sun protection. So it has that darker color to help protect it from the sun. But you can see that it's just the end of the tongue that has that color there. So uh, that's some kind of cool. And out of our three giraffes here, Mastari is really the only one that shows off that cool fact that um, there actually is two colors to the giraffe's tongue. So you guys are getting an extra special uh, treat with that question. Good work, I, Amy. Uh, that's so cool. I've never seen that before in any of our past programs. That's amazing. By the way, the fact that we've had a tongue in the camera and the snorting earlier is just like amazing. This is the best. You never know what you're going to get with live animal interactions, and this has been incredible. So thank you for this. Ah, uh, dear. I'm going to take one more from Facebook, and we'll go back to our live teachers. We're ripping through these guys. It's been such a fun question for you. So Ms. Garaya's class wants to know how long can their neck grow? Just their neck. Okay, well, that's also, uh, you know, it's variable, obviously, between the different types of giraffes. And then, again, it's variable between males and females. So, proportionately, male giraffes usually have a bit of a longer neck than the females do. So, uh, I believe Nico's neck is like seven or six and a half to seven feet. I'm sorry, it's not in metric. I know it should be. Uh, but his is proportionately longer than the females. And uh, the theory for that is, because of course these are all theories, we weren't there to watch these guys evolve, is that because the males use their head and neck like a wrecking ball, like I said, they need to be dominant. So that's how they fight. They swing their head and neck against each other and that's how they tell who's the toughest. So they'll start by walking you know, alongside each other. They size each other up. If one is definitely much bigger than the other, the smaller one will probably be like, not today, and they'll walk away. But if they're a good match, they'll duke it out by swinging their head and neck at each other. So that's why Kiko's head is covered in bumps, and he has those ossicones that have lost all their hair because he swings it, and he uh, loses the hair by doing it that way. And they keep putting down more and more bone. They ossify their skull as they age. So the older a male giraffe is, the kind of gnarlier and knobbier their head and horns become. So that long neck is longer in males because they're actually using it for fighting. Whereas the female giraffes, they have a shorter neck. They don't use it for fighting. They're ossicones. They don't fight. They're pretty gentle. So they don't lose the hair and they don't need to get that extra bone growth on their head. And so being able to reach the leaves uh, that are higher than other animals can reach is kind of like an added bonus. So did one evolve uh, first or did they co-evolve? I mean, I guess we don't really know, but you know, when, when you study giraffes in the wild, they tend to eat from the middle of the tree, not the top of the tree. So if you're gonna go through all the trouble of having this bizarre, huge, long neck, you would think that they would exclusively eat from the top of the trees, which they don't necess necessarily do, but they do definitely use it for fighting. So there's two uses for the neck. And uh, yeah, there's no, there's no one answer for how uh, tall a giraffe, giraffe neck is. And in fact, this year they have, they have, uh, found two dwarf giraffes uh, in the wild. So naturally shortened giraffes. Uh, so, you know, just like people, no two giraffes are the same. Some will have longer necks and some will have shorter. Yeah, how neat is that? By the way, I like the uh, comparison with people. The older we get, the more hard-headed we get. But I really want to encourage all our audience, check out on YouTube when you're doing this program. Earth a giraffe fight law. The amazing thing you'll ever see in nature. Wild to see giraffes fight. I really encourage everyone to check that out when you're done. All right, we're going to go back to our live classes. We're going to be a little rebellious. We're going to go a little beyond time, but it's just too much fun. So I'm going to go to Miss N's class first. If you want to unmute your mic and come on in for a second question, you are good to go. Oh, just the mute button on the bottom of your screen. It was not working. I can come back in a minute if you'd like. I'll come back in two seconds, okay? Just press the mute button at the bottom, it's okay if it's all for now. Bill, you wanna come in? Go for it. Sure, Harper in my class would like to know, uh, how do you take care of the giraffes at the zoo? What do you have to do to take care of them? Fantastic question, and uh, yeah, so as I mentioned before, probably one of the most important things you need to do is decipher their language. If you do not have to speak to the animal you're in charge of taking care of, you're not going to have a very good go and uh, no two animals are the same and giraffes are very, very hard to read. Uh, you need to know their body language and exactly what they're saying and how to communicate what you want to them. So one thing we do is we need to train them to to actually volunteer and want to participate in their own care. 
Kiko's over 2,000 pounds. So what do you think we're going to be able to force a big guy like that to do? Nothing. So if he doesn't want to work with you, if he doesn't trust you and uh, uh, understand that we're working together, uh, you're not going to get too far. So you have to be able to train these animals to participate in their own care. So, I mean, of course, you have to clean uh, up everything that they leave for you <laughs> uh, over the course of a day, and you need to put out lots of branches. So here at the zoo, it means we need to have a, a tree farm where we farm a bunch of trees that we're able to cut down to feed animals like the giraffes. We need to preserve it because obviously uh, here in Canada, leaves are hard to find outside. So we preserve it so we have just the same amount of, of beautiful leaves to feed these animals in the winter as we do in the summer. But we also spend a lot of time working with these animals to participate in their own care. So little Imani, she's a year old. She already knows to put her feet on hoof trimming blocks and we're able to give her hoof trips. She will volunteer her neck for us to uh, be able to get a blood sample to submit to the to the vet team if we ever need to. Uh, we've trained them for uh, oral swabs. We're actually uh, with our nutrition department working on a nutrition study to help uh, establish the best uh, nutritional health we can for these guys. So we need to do an actual swab of their mouth. Uh, I mean, I, I, that was kind of a gimme because saliva is not hard to come by on a giraffe. But yeah, there is a lot of, of just spending time with the giraffe, uh, getting their trust, letting them know you're here to work with them for their best care. So that's probably, I'd say, the number one thing for working with the giraffe, understanding them and working with them. Yeah. What a, I, I've never heard of the tree forest before. That is super, super cool. And it really, everything you mentioned speaks to the fact that zoos have become the world leaders in conservation. Uh, great zoos and aquariums around the world, of course, exemplified today by the Toronto Zoo, really do an amazing job to understand uh, and help protect animals worldwide. So do check them out. Head to your local zoo when you can if you're, if you're not tuning in the Toronto area. Uh, they're such special places with really amazing creatures like our friend Mastari here. Um, let's go back to Ms. Enns. you got the mic working, which is awesome. And then we'll wrap up with Ms. Wallace in just a minute. Hi, Ms. Enns. Hi. Sorry, that, that was a wonderful presentation. We really appreciate it. I just wanted to say goodbye and thank you for everything. But we didn't have another question. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Ms. Enns. It's so nice to have you here today. And Ms. Wallace, if you want to wrap us up with a question then? for it yeah for sure so how long do um your um giraffes usually live at the zoo how long would you expect them to live okay well this is uh both one of my favorite and least favorite <laughs> questions because nobody likes to think about the end of a giraffe's life but uh i will say that giraffes are one of the animals that you know when you're this little uh, uh pride of lions can take you out pretty easily but when you're as big as uh, kiko there in the back using his ossicone stick dominate his toy there, you know, not much wants to tangle with you. So if you can reach adulthood as a giraffe, you're gonna live about as long in the wild as you would in captivity. So that's pretty rare for an animal to have the same lifespan uh, in both places. Cause of course here at uh, Toronto Zoo, they get the best care possible. You'd expect them to live very long. Now I'm gonna contradict myself and say, these uh, <laughs> giraffes at the Toronto Zoo have lived very, very long lives. So uh, 20 is like about the average age, but the last group of giraffes that gave rise to our uh, Mastari over there, they lived into their late 20s and even early 30s, which is just absolutely incredible. It speaks to the care that they uh, received. And so they can live into their 30s, but uh, you know, anywhere from their late teens to early 20s is about average for a giraffe. But again, it's one of those things where it's like people, like, you know, like all living things, there's no guarantees in life. Some live very long lives some live very short lives and that's just uh that's just how it is when you're an animal as when you're a person i love those questions and again you mentioned that it speaks to the amazing care that these animals receive at the zoo uh something that you guys can check out we featured in a lot of broadcasts in the past is the aza or caza in canada uh where you can see that the, the zoo or aquariums at the highest standard of animal care and what you quite often find in those places is that animals live really long really healthy happy lives uh, like our amazing giraffes here so Jason, this has been so, so much fun. Before we wrap up, I want to bring up a, a few more links for everyone to check out. Uh, Ann Dag joined us today. Ann, it's such a pleasure to get to see you. I, I know I'm not there in person, but virtually it's such a, a, an honor. Uh, and if people want to check out the Ann and his Dag Foundation, they're doing amazing work to help protect giraffes. So do check that link out. The Junior Giraffe Club, we've got some members of that today. An amazing program to connect with other groups around the world and, and celebrating giraffes, such a special creature. And of course, if you want to learn more about giraffes and all sorts of other animals, Head to the Toronto Zoo virtually. They've been at Zoo to You for the last year. They are now open as well, which is so, so exciting. I can't wait to get my ticket in person. So, Toronto Zoo.
spirituality, if you want to do school activities with your kids, if you're a family or class, kids at longerday.com. This is right on the Zoom website. Right? So check that out to keep the excitement going. Uh, Jason and our whole Zoo team, thank you guys so much for putting together such a special presentation today. And on behalf of all our teachers tuning in around the world, I'm going to bring in Miss Little and Miss Wallace to say a big quick farewell and, and goodbye. But thank you guys so, so much for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of your day.